Hi, I'm Dick Collins. This program is on a subject that instrument pilots had better take very seriously, night IFR. On the one hand, you can get your instrument rating without any training at night, and the only recent experience requirements are those three VFR takeoffs and landings, where, on the other hand, the most difficult thing we do flying IFR is night instrument flying. In this case, the level of difficulty also means a dramatic increase in risk for most pilots. Putting exact numbers on safety records is hard to do because the hours flown are approximate, almost fictional to some. But there's a general consensus that the night IFR record in personal and business flying is about three times worse than the IFR record in the daytime. The pilots who fly a lot at night, like the folks who fly checks around, don't have so much trouble. They're proficient and comfortable with it, and they do a good job. The rest of us who fly at night IFR infrequently don't do so well. Let's get one thing out of the way first. Engine failure-related accidents are but a tiny part of the night IFR accident picture. Systems failures account for slightly more, but when all mechanical problems are considered, they come to but about 10% of the serious night IFR accidents. And engines are a bigger part of the problem in twin-engine propeller airplanes than in singles. It's still a small part, and logic suggests that we work hardest on the other 90% of the problem. To do this, we're going to look at night IFR flying and examine the areas where risk is proven to be the highest given the current pilot population flying the current crop of airplanes. We fly at night in two ways. We may fly an IFR flight in the dark from start to finish, or the way most of us do it is to complete a flight at night that started in the daytime. Looking first at starting an IFR flight in the dark, think for a moment about the importance of the pre-flight. 